We'll move on to our final team of this podcast, the Melbourne Football Club, who had maybe, we'll give them a C. <laughs> <laughs> um, they finished first with a record of 17-4-1, and one, one draw, 131% roughly, and they exited the season as premiers. Um, what did you make of Melbourne this year? It was their year, start to mm. end their year. They've agree. been the team. Yeah, I agree. I've been saying that for most of the year. Can't give myself too much credit for that because they were on top for most <laughs> yeah. of the year. And plenty of other people were saying it. But I just had this belief in Melbourne this year. Like, I just I just saw it happening. Like, I could. See, it felt like West Coast in 2018 in hindsight. Obviously, that's a year that's close to my heart. But you could just, you could just see it all happening for them. Mm. And their best form was clearly the best. And like I said, I love when you see the best team's form come back at the end of the year. Geelong are the opposite example of that where their form did not come back <laughs> at all. But Melbourne hit top gear in the finals and arguably saved their best uh, performances for that final series. Um, they were a pleasure to watch. And uh, as I said, I've got a few friends that go for Melbourne. So it was nice to sort of ride that high with them a little bit right. and remind me that my team is nowhere near it at the moment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I-, I love the story of Melbourne this year. Um, okay. Other than the obvious, what's some, what's some positives? Oh, we can go through it, the obvious. I'll say this one's probably obvious, but <laughs> that's fine. Luke Jackson, the rising star, I think. Oh, yeah, well, that one's big. probably a little less obvious, but yeah, yeah it, is, yeah. it is a big one. Um, but because that youth, like, because they've relied on that youth, for that last patch of youth, it's grown into the team that it is now. But mm. to see guys like him, Cozzy Pickett, still contribute to this premiership team shows there's a lot of upside in it, which is something Melbourne fans should be salivating over. Yeah, we talk about a, pre- a, a draft class that within two mm. years. All, th- all of them were premiership players. Luke Jackson, as the long-term yep. project ruck, is a rising yeah. star as a as a best 22 player in a grand final. Arguably the guy that swung that third quarter where they just steamrolled him in the grand final. Like, even the midfielder guys, like Gorn said, leave him in there. He's doing something mm-hmm. different to what I'm doing. These guys is that right? Like, yeah. Hmm. Luke Jackson going in as ruck in the third was the big thing, apparently, that wow. swung Melbourne's yeah. big run towards the end there. True. I mean, also, it was Oliver and Petrarca yeah. going fucking nuts. But, yeah. I, yeah, I see what you're saying, though. They Like, he was the ruckman when they got that run on. That's Because yeah. that's the thing is, the teams can probably defend Gorn because they know Gorn's going to win mm. the tap likely and can kind of figure out where he's going to put it whereas Jackson's probably a bit more unpredictable and guys like Petraka and Oliver were able to capitalise on it talk about nailing a draft though we talked about Jackson Cosy Pickett was picked 11 nine, 11? 11 it was yeah, yeah. and um, then Trent Rivers 24 even oh, yeah three amazing players to be two ace Freo boys too like, yeah yeah yeah. Woo. so so jealous of that trio um, uh, and then even um, Bowie this year was their first rounder last year uh, and he came in as a premiership player played seven games never played mm. in a loss um, just their youth in general yeah. but yeah the flag the, is the biggest uh, positive <laughs> the dominance of the final performance will live long yeah. in the memory I think we'll, we'll think back even though Melbourne made the f- to, uh, top spot by two points premiership points we'll look back on them as a dominant premiership yeah. team because they just brushed aside people this uh, teams this off season this is final <laughs> Petrarca Oliver Gaunt Viney as a midfield quartet yep. um, just insane like that that's up there with, that's probably yeah. the best in the league definitely mm. it's uh, one of the best I've seen in terms of how exciting they are when they play yeah. Langdon came in was uh, good with the outside run obviously we're going to run out of players to um, yeah. or we're going to run out of like superlatives for some of these players it's, it's ridiculous Bailey Fritch yeah Bailey Fritch yep. in the forward line as well in yep. general with uh, obviously a question mark over key forward, the key forward position yep. they did recruit Ben Brown who is okay like yeah. we, we he can put a bit of mayonnaise yeah. in and say he was amazing, but he was he was okay. He did his job in the grant. Like he, once yeah. they brought him in, he did his job. But like yeah, they he was consistently fine. have him in. Yeah, it was it's a good recruit, yeah. definitely, um, especially for the prize. Yes, yep, um, Premiership player straight away. But but more so that around the those key forwards, uh, it was the medium yeah. players kicking goals. So Fritch was the obvious one. Um, I think Spargo. Spargo. I don't know how many goals he, he kicked, but he's alright. Yeah, he's like a small forward, yeah. like pressure forward. I think. Yeah. Uh, Pickett uh, was outstanding yeah, at times. He... Reminded me much of Willy Rioli. Uh, again, I'm going to bring everything back to the Eagles, <laughs> but it just reminded me of like when we added just this magical talent. His yeah. score, X factor. His stats may not reflect how impactful he is, mm. um, and Cosy Pickett's like that as well in terms of just the ex- yeah. exciting nature, turning half opportunities into opportunities. Yeah. Neil Bullen's the other one I'm trying to think of. He's a very good yeah. player. Like. Can do he can go in the mid if you need him, but they don't need him to obviously with those guys you mentioned before. But yeah. he's a good guy that can play forward, can give mm. you what you need. Quite a few young Premiership players. Tom Sparrow is another one that's only yeah. like second or third year, maybe maybe a bit older, yeah. but yeah. Um, just the ruthlessness in general. Oh, their back line: yeah. Salem off a halfback flank, but also Lever and May yeah. as the some of the best, probably the, the, the best defensive yeah. duo in the comp, definitely. 
Uh, their final round win to claim top spot. I think they would have won the flag regardless. However, that is just is a long-lasting memory yeah. uh, for their fans to, to get the job done at GMHBA, which is the scene yeah. of their horrific 186-point yeah. loss. Um, it sticks yeah. to like the scene, like it's their year. Like it stick, sticks sticks mm. to that fame. Like it's just been their year from round one. How could you bet against them? <laughs> Pretty much. And even though you know there's a curse around minor premiers winning flags, not, it doesn't happen that often. Um, they were ruthless. Yeah. Three wins over the Cats as well. I'll put it's a bit of a positive. Another yeah. team. It's, it's just a team that's terrorised them over the years, and to do it three times and once yeah. at GMHBA and once get that monkey them. off your back. Absolutely. Can we think of some negatives? Ooh. I dare you. <laughs> I'll be here a while. <laughs> negatives from Melbourne. Uh, look, if you had to be nitpicky, uh, something come to mind. I was sort of gonna. Be, you could be like the K forwardy, still a bit like not really resolved, like Weedham and yeah. Tommy McDonald, Ben Brown. Yeah, I think I, I did actually put Weedham down, and it's it's harsh because, but it's just yeah. like obviously a top ten pick that they want to really come on. Found his found himself out of the team, yeah. but he'll probably be back there. I think it's actually a really big positive that he signed on. Yeah. Because he had probably a reasonable offer to leave, I'd imagine. Other times, he would, he would have been like a Callum Coleman-Jones type of target, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so the fact that they've retained him uh, speaks high. Uh, yeah, is a, is a massive um, feather in the cap again. I'm trying to think of the phrase, but it's, it's not feather in the cap, but I'll go with it. Uh, in terms of Melbourne, um, so... For for them and what they've got brewing, the players want to stay, which is which is great for them. Uh, if I had to nitpick some negatives for them, just their lapses against poor teams. So they lost to the Crows, Pies, and Hawks this year. Uh-huh. Oh, sorry, no, Crows and Pies drew with the Hawks, and yeah. those were all bottom four teams or close to. Mm. I think the Hawks might have jumped out. Um, yeah, Hawks slipped out. But in that at last the end, six weeks, at the end of the day, who cares? <laughs> they uh, they were amazing this year. The Hawks were the anti Bulldogs. They were like shit all year, and then they had that last yeah. good five six weeks. Whereas the Bulldogs were good all year, and then had the shit last five six weeks. That's very true. That's very true. Uh, a plus. Yeah. I don't think you can possibly yeah. score um, anything D- less than A plus. Yeah. Off season, they've traded their way back into the first round, which is interesting. That makes me think, like they've done this three years in a row. They've traded back a future first into this yeah. year's first round. So I wonder how long they're going to keep doing that. Whether they've got their eye on someone in particular. Or if they just think, can we just keep doing this forever and just yeah. never stop taking first rounders? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, and they traded it. Well, they recruited Luke Dunstan to replace um, Nathan, Nathan Jones, really. Yeah. So, um, And they, they had a blessed injury run this year, which means that Dunstan may be called upon next year. Uh, Are there any doubts over Melbourne going forward? Nah. Nah, me neither. I, I mean, I guess if you had to suggest something, historically, but also in recent history, when they have a good year, they followed up with a poor year. Yeah. But I feel like they're too good. I think they've overcome. They've had that happen a couple of times, and I think they've overcome it. Now. Yeah. Um, kind of like we we're talking about with the Bulldogs after their downflow after sixteen. I think they've they've had that now. And now they're permanently here until they're all old and retired. Yeah, I I agree with that. Uh, it's funny. I think in the nineties they kept jumping from like wooden spoon or bottom four to top four to the <laughs> grand final to the like they were doing this ridiculous thing, and it's funny how it kind of repeated itself through eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and yeah. twenty one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me but uh, I don't know I mean I, they've lost Burgess who is uh, their fitness coach uh, uh, strength and conditioning rather and he is underrated he's very highly regarded yeah I was going to say I think uh, that that's a big loss but I don't see it I can't see it mm-hmm. really meaning they'll drop off but their it would have helped with their like health and 100%, and stuff. 100% but uh, yeah I don't think it really makes them too yeah. vulnerable so but don't forget the year before this year they had like 16 pre-season surgeries or whatever yeah, so that's yeah. kind of like the contrast between last year and this year 100% yeah um, yeah, so that's probably all we've got for Melbourne and huh? the teams generally. Melbourne do good. Yeah, yeah, you you, <laughs> you win, Melbourne. Congrats. Um, uh, thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in to the podcast today. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify uh, or podcast app or whatever, uh, we also have a YouTube channel, so go check that out. You can watch all the clips and stuff like that. Um, we are going to be doing some draft content over the, the next few months, uh, a couple of interviews, well, the next few months, the next four weeks. Um, get together and do a phantom draft maybe next yeah, time that would those be, are always fun yeah I'm looking forward to that so uh, stick fat with the channel guys thank you for watching and listening and we will see you in the next one bloody earth get around my runescape channel oh yes yeah you want to plug that what, yeah where is I've it? just called it Bushbees. I've sort of got it on YouTube we'll probably get it going on the socials and stuff definitely I'm thinking I might stream Saturday so people can come along and ask me what I think of Finn Callahan or something <laughs> <laughs> sounds good can't wait <laughs> alright thanks Bush we'll see you later <laughs>